This video is going to be on Learning Objective 1, where we will prepare the financial statements, including the classified balance sheet. And so we've already prepared the financial statements. Now we're just continuing looking at that a little bit deeper and expanding what the balance sheet itself looks like. So in the previous chapters, we prepared the financial statements, like I said. We prepared the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. A refresher for, your, for you, if you don't remember, let me see if I can get my pen here and write on the board. Um, sorry for the pause, give me a second. Okay, let's see if we can do this. If you remember, we said our accounting equation was assets equals liabilities plus equity. Whoa. Try that again. Within equity, we said that there was common stock minus dividends plus revenues minus expenses. And then we said that, let me change colors, that the revenues minus expenses would give us net income is harder than you might think. And that's what's going to show up on our income statement. And so, as it says, the income statement reports revenues and expenses, which provides us with net income or loss for that period. Then, let's change colors again. We said that if we include dividends, that provides us with retained earnings. and that that information is what you'll find on the statement of retained earnings. And so as the slide says, it shows how retained earnings change during the period due to net income or loss in dividends. And so we're going to have our beginning retained earnings plus or minus our net income or loss, which is the subset here, um, minus dividends, and that's going to give us our ending retained earnings. And then finally, the balance sheet reports the assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity as of the last day of the report, which is why we um, do, the, on the formatting, we list the date rather than month ended, whatever. And so that includes the whole bigger picture, which I'll put in green and highlight here. And so that should just be a refresher. We've already discussed this, I'm just trying to um, kind of bring it all back together as we close out the accounting cycle. And so in the slide we see a adjusted trial balance which is where we left off in chapter 3 and so we have our trial balance which lists all of the accounts and all of their balances at the end of the um, financial period that we're reporting and then they've kind of organized it here where you can see that the bottom part where we have service revenue um, down to expenses, let me go back to orange, that all of that belongs on the income statement. So from service revenue down to interest expense. And then you can also see that we have dividends and so we're going to need to pull that information to our statement of retained earnings. And then the information at the top is what's going to go on our balance sheet. And that is why I was telling you that it behooves you to organize your trial balance correctly, assets, then liabilities, then equity, because then it's already organized and ready to just be pulled straight to your financial statements. As we've already discussed in the previous chapters, there's a relationship amongst the financial statements, which is why we have to report why we have to prepare the income statement first, then the statement of retained earnings, because the income statement provides our net income or loss, and that will move or flow over to the statement of retained earnings. And then the statement of retained earnings will provide a ending um, stockholder's equity, and that is going to be moved over to the balance sheet. And so that's the importance of preparing them in the correct order. 
And then these um, slides just kind of briefly show us the financial statements again. So you've already seen this where we have revenues, then the revenue listed, the expenses, all the expenses listed to provide us with a net income. And it's telling us that's going to flow, that 8,550 is going to flow to our statement of retained earnings, which we see next. That And the statement of retained earnings begins with retained earnings beginning balance. So that happens to be November 1st. It's in this case, it's zero because this business just went, it just started operations for the first time. But if this business had been operating, we would be pulling this from the previous period. Then the net income for the two months, which we got from the income statement, gives us a subtotal minus the dividends, gives us our ending retained earnings, or in this case, December 31st. And that's the number that we're going to pull to our balance sheet which we can see here. And so we have all of our assets, all of our liabilities, and then under stockholders equity, we see common stock, retained earnings, and that gives us total stockholders equity. And just remember that retained earnings is coming from your statement of retained earnings. So in this chapter, we expand the, the balance sheet into a classified balance sheet. And all that means is that on the balance sheet, we're going to add additional labels or additional um, organization so that all the information is sorted into a specific category, assets being shown in the order of liquidity and liabilities being classified as current, meaning within a year, or long-term, meaning greater than a year, due after a year. And so when I say assets are shown in, in order of liquidity, what does that mean? Liquidity is a measure of how quickly and easily it'll be converted to cash. So the easier or the quicker that we could convert it to cash, the earlier or sooner we'll see it on the balance sheet as far as assets go. And then the more long term um, will be at the bottom of that. So as far as the assets go, like I just said, current assets um, will be current assets, meaning they're liquid, um, where they can be converted to cash, sold or used in the next 12 months, or within the business's operating cycle, if the cycle is longer than a year. So if the operating cycle happens to be 13 months or 14 months, then it's still a current asset within 13 months if they have a 14 month operating cycle. And so what exactly is the operating cycle? That's the time it takes for whenever we are spending cash to acquire goods or services, then the goods and services are then sold to a customer and then we collect the cash from our customer. So whatever is a normal operating cycle for the entire process. Most things are going to fall in less than a 12 month operating cycle, but there might be instances that are longer term, um, such as something like maybe really luxury that's not being sold as often, or maybe like diamond, like really high expensive diamonds that the um, dealer might be holding for longer than a year before they're converting it and selling it and collecting the cash. Um, Long-term assets, on the other hand, they will not be converted to cash within the year. And so these are things like long-term investments, um, investments in bonds that we intend to hold. And I just want to highlight the word intend because when we're doing accounting, um, that's as largely where we're going to have to depend on our intention in how we will categor categorize things. There's also um, PPE, property, plant, and equipment. And so those are our long-lived tangible assets, such as trucks or, um, like it says, property, so buildings, etc. And then intangible assets have no physical form, um, but they're still valuable because of special rights. And so that might be things like, um, oh my gosh, my... I just lost the word I was looking for, copyrights and trademarks and that sort of stuff. As far as liabilities go, 
Again, we're going to organize them as current or long-term. So current being a liability that we need to pay within the year of the operating cycle. Things like accounts payable, salaries payable, unearned revenue. Um, long-term liabilities are things that are not going to be paid within the year of the operating cycle. So those would be things like a mortgage payable or a note payable. And just to be aware, the current portion would be listed as a current liability and then the long-term portion would be listed under the long-term liability. So um, as far as a mortgage goes, if it's a 30-year mortgage, years tw 2 through 29 would be listed as long-term and year 1 would be listed as current. And then finally on the classified balance sheet we have the stockholders equity and that, that remains the same and so it's going to reflect the stockholders contributions through common stock as well as retained earnings, meaning the amount of assets left over after the corporation has paid its liabilities. Um, and so, and just again, let's just here, when we did the accounting equation, we broke down equity and we said common stock or everything that the, that the shareholders put into the business minus dividends, which is everything that we've paid back out to the common stockholders plus revenues minus expenses and we said revenues minus expenses will give us net income or loss hopefully income and then we said if we include the dividends and net income, that gives us retained earnings. And that's what we're reporting in the stockholders equity section, the common stock and the retained earnings. And that's why it's saying it represents the amount of assets left over after the corporation has paid its liabilities because, let's finish this accounting equation here. It's everything left over, so. All right, so let's see a picture then of this classified balance sheet. You can see this is exhibit 4-3 uh, from our textbook. And so it has, it's just, it's just like the previous balance sheet, except now it's classified, meaning it has these additional labels where we see current assets versus PPE. And we see current liabilities versus long-term liabilities. That's really the only difference. And so then, Within our plant property and equipment, we're still doing the same thing where we're listing a building less the accumulated depreciation to get the book value, which is listed here. Um, but other than that, we're it's really just the same balance sheet we've been preparing. We're just making it slightly more organized and easier to understand. And so that's it for preparing the classified balance sheet. On the next video, we'll talk about the purpose and... Um, process of closing all of our temporary accounts to end a period.